In its 363-year history, the Delaware Army National Guard has done a few things that have never been done before. 1655, Swedish settlers asked to take up arms to defend the colony against a Dutch attack on Fort Christina. During the American Revolution, Delaware's 1st Regiment fought with General George Washington at the Battle of Long Island. War of 1812, Delaware volunteer units drove off a British naval squadron seeking control of the Delaware River. 2018, Brigadier General Karen Berry makes history when she becomes the first female to be promoted in state to the rank of Brigadier General, and it's that last little bit of information that we would like to address with you this afternoon. With us is Delaware Army National Guard's newest Brigadier General, Karen Berry. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having, having you. Now, I got a lot of questions for you. First off, you are still teaching, right? Where are you teaching? I am. I teach at Sussex Central High School in Georgetown, Delaware. Okay. And I want to say congratulations on your new rank. Thank this you. This was last uh, couple of months, is that right? It was effective at the beginning of November. Uh, I had the ceremony where I got to officially pin the rank on. Um, the adjutant general did that December 1st. And you originally enlisted as a flight operations specialist, right? What yes. led you that direction? I wanted to join the aviation unit. That's uh, I had some friends that were there, and uh, I needed the money for school. Yeah. And they wouldn't let me. They didn't need uh, mechanics for the helicopters, and so they said my eyes weren't good enough to be a mechanic. But they were good enough to go to the electronics school, and I was like, wait a minute, how come <laughs> I can work on the electronics but not the big part? So I went to the flight operations school, which is you're dispatching the helicopters, right. essentially is what you're doing. And um, that's where I started. And, and you returned not long ago from Afghanistan. I did, a, a little over a year ago. And how was that? It was, it's interesting. It's uh, interesting, because so? there was a lot of changes. I was getting there right after um, we decided not to pull, to downsize as much. Right. in the country and so we were sort of trying to reverse directions and my job was as a communications to make sure that our strategic communications was in place and where we needed it so that's computers and phones and uh, it's hard when you're pulling everything out and then all of a sudden saying uh oh we need yeah we want things to go back and and Americans want fiber optics they want the best and you can't always do that so we're we had to find a way to give them the best uh, available communication system to do their job. Right. When you enlisted, 1987? 1987. Did you have Brigadier General in mind? I did not. I, I, uh, I never thought I would be in the military. <laughs> um, so I didn't really think out past the initial, um, as an enlisted soldier, you have an enlistment commitment of, uh, I think it was six years yeah. at the time. That was all I was thinking about getting through, and college. Wow. Now, your husband, Michael, mm -hmm. is, is also a general he with is. the Delaware National Guard. Uh, your daughter, Ashley, is actually a producer with us here at WVOC. Uh, so keeping all that. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this. What do they think of all of this that's going on with you? The, my husband and my daughter? Yeah. Uh, well, I think we've been planning for it or hoping that this would happen probably for the last few years. So I don't, I don't know. I yeah. think it's just part of, of what's, we're just excited that it happened. It didn't, it didn't seem like it was always going to happen. Um, with both my husband and I in the Guard, it becomes a challenge. And we knew that because we're a small state. Um, so it was a balance. He thought he was going to retire. He's not. He's going to stay in and take over the National Guard in February, uh, or March is when it'll be uh, official. And um, it's, we just adjust, you have to be flexible. I have learned to be flexible over the last 30 years, right. for so sure. You're, so you're the first female general officer? Just for the Army side. We actually had a, side, okay. our adjutant general was the first female Air Force. Okay, okay, so was it a tough road? It's, I, it doesn't, it just seems it, it's difficult for anyone to make the rank. Right. Um, but it's, I think, because there's just not, it's, it's hard for, I think there's less females in general, and then when you start moving up through the ranks, it just kind of gets tougher and tougher. So if I didn't make general, um, it might be another 10 years before someone else was in position that, that would even possibly make it. So 
I just I guess it's just number you know numbers right, statistically right. there's less females in so so I'm, I'm running out of time but I want to ask you what would you tell somebody that's considering the same track just go for it the sky's the limit and you um, I think if you just kind of keep pushing toward your goal and um, completing all the things you need to do it, it can happen Brigadier General Karen Berry, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for Congratulations having me. again. Thank you. That is absolutely fantastic.